Hello friends, welcome to In 10 Minutes series. I am Muthu Kumar. Today we are going to see about the magic triangle made with cloud, data science and big data. In solving any business use case, we need to answer these questions where, how and what. Cloud is going to give the answer to the question where and big data is going to give the answer to the question how and data science is going to give the answer to the question what okay. now let's see about in detail about the cloud cloud is nothing but a massive infrastructure network together for storing processing handling any amount of data using any amount of resources for any amount of time and get charged based on pay as you go model amazon web services google cloud rackspace all are very good examples for cloud in traditional world what we will be doing we will be doing vertical scaling say for example assume this is a system you have and if you need more capacity of a system what you will be doing you will be increasing the processing capacity memory or the hard disk right so you will be increasing the capacity but after some time you cannot go you cannot scale this is called scale up architecture in traditional world this is what we will be doing but in cloud world we will be doing a horizontal scaling I'll be adding more and more machines parallel to each other right and I'll be increasing the capacity this way I can increase the capacity to any number I want and cloud facilitates this it can get the systems or any infrastructure that, that we want and get it connected over the network and get it in very short duration in current scenario everything is available in cloud right from storage compute big data analytics machine learning everything is a service available whether it's a software or infrastructure or a platform everything is available as a service for example amazon web services provides ec2 for compute s3 for storage rds for database emr for big data almost like 40 plus services they give from amazon web services any cloud whether it is amazon web services or google cloud or rackspace they offer dynamic provisioning of any resources in huge volume within a short span of time. If I want 10,000 systems to do the analytics of 100 terabytes of data, I can get it in few minutes, do my work in few hours, release those resources and get charged only for the duration or the capacity I am using. So that is the cloud. And when it comes to big data, big data is nothing but it's going to give the answer to the question how how to handle huge amount of data how to store huge amount of data how to process huge amount of data how to do anything with huge amount of data when i say anything it can be cleaning sanitizing analyzing it can be anything we will be following a model called divide and conquer model within big data in traditional world what we will be doing i'll be storing a huge data in some data store any analysis if i want to do I'll be reading it into my system through the I.O., through the network. I'll be reading it. And I need huge bandwidth of my network or I.O. But in big data world, I'll be using distributed computing and distributed storage. Okay. So what we will do, we will be distributing the data in a cluster or in a group of systems to store huge amount of data when it comes to storage when it comes to processing we'll do the processing with multiple systems divide the work across multiple systems and consolidate the work in big data framework like hadoop it helps us to achieve distributed storage as well as distributed processing the major benefit with uh, big data frameworks like hadoop it gives us the capability to send or execute or process the data near to the data rather than transferring the data outside the storage and then do the processing in traditional world what we will do we will copy the data from the storage as we had seen here we will copy the data from the storage to the compute resource and then we will be doing the computing but in big data world i'll have a number of systems assume I, this is my huge file storage i'll be distributing them across n number of systems this way the storage will get distributed and slicing them consolidating them everything will be taken care by the framework and if i have to do some analysis on this huge data what i'll be doing i'll be sending the program 
near to the compute. Yeah? For example, if this is the program, I will be sending it to each system wherever I have the piece of data. I will be sending it near to the system and get the processing done. The results will be consolidated and it will be getting, getting me the final confirmed results. So the consolidation of the result, everything will be taken care by the framework. And finally, big data is not a huge database. Big data is much beyond than a huge database because it has the power to store, it has the power to process. Right? It can handle varieties of data coming at a huge velocity. Say for example, it can handle video streams, it can handle audio streams, it can handle images, it can handle uh, huge varieties of unstructured data. Now, when it comes to data science, data science is about mining or uh, harvesting huge amount of data which includes both structured and unstructured data to identify some pattern and trends. After extracting the insights, the information could be mixed and amalgamated with the other information to predict the future trend and pattern. And there are spectrum of analysis we do. Like one is descriptive analytics, diagnostic analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics. All this analytics is existing for decades. It's not a new thing that uh, evolved very recently. It's existing for decades. We do this analytics, but with the big data, with the facility, what we have got now, huge amount of infrastructure, huge amount of data availability, analytics with the big data is going to give us huge insights. Right? For example, predictive and prescriptive analytics. It's advanced uh, stage of analytics where we will prescribe the right product to the customer and the right change we can make to the organization for highest efficiency. Descriptive analytics is about what happened in the past. Diagnostic analytics is about what is happening or why it did happen. All such analytics we will be doing in diagnostic analytics. And predictive analytics will identify what will happen in future. For example, like linear logistic regression analytics and all, we will use so the, such methodologies to do predictive analytics. Pres prescriptive analytics is what should I do, what should happen, what this particular user should buy th so that the user will get the best value. All such analytics, we will be doing it in prescriptive analytics. For predictive and prescriptive analytics in data science world, you guys may have heard about the machine learning. A small uh, word about machine learning. In any program, we will be giving our data as an input and the program will modify or analyze the data and it's going to give some output as a data. But in machine learning, it will give, we will be giving a data as an input and I will be getting a model or a program as an output. I can use this program by giving some input. I can get some output, either like predictive output or like a prescriptive output. I can get it from this particular model. Generating this program or generating this model, it will be done using machine learning. There are tons of algorithms, well proved, well beautiful algorithms available. We can use those algorithms depending on the use case that we want to use and get things done. Let's take one simple scenario. Assume if I'm going to give this set of images to a kid, right? And if I ask them to separate them, consolidate them, or like segregate them into various categories, after learning, uh, after identifying what this is, each image is, what they do, everything, uh, they will come to a conclusion, say, there are three set of categories within this set of images, right? Three categories. The same way, like how we do it with the kid, I can make a computer system to understand these images. All I'll be doing is, I'll be converting each and every image as a vector, because system can understand only zeros and ones, it can understand only numbers. So I'll be converting into a vector, I'll use uh, various algorithms, convert them and group them together. So finally what system will do, it will group them into three groups, all the birds in one group, all the animals in one group and all the human faces in one group. And it will tell them it identified three major groups within this set of images. In practical scenario, here for uh, explaining purpose, I have taken just four images, but in practical scenario, we'll be using thousands of images so that the uh, analysis is more effective. After getting this cluster, or like we call this as a cluster, 
the group of images i'll name them the first group is called birds the second group is called animals and third group is called a human now if i give a totally a new image to this particular model after i'll be generating a model to identify this if i give a new model if i give a new image to this model you can very well say this belongs to an animal category okay this is about the machine learning and to summarize all these three cloud is going to give me a set of infrastructure where i can get a x amount of cloud computing capacity x amount of storage and big data is framework which is going to facilitate me to distribute the storage or distribute the processing and i may get huge amount of data as a batch or streaming to my big data that's the ingestion and the streaming data i'll be storing it into my massive storage batch as well as i'll be storing it in the massive storage after harvesting huge amount of information i'll do data mining analysis i'll generate a model and every day whenever i get the more and more new data i'll keep refining the model and the model can be used by giving the input to the model and get the predict prediction output or prescription output i can get it this is how all these three the cloud big data and machine learning or data science going to make a magic triangle right i hope you all enjoyed the 10 minute series thank you if you like it please do like this website and more tweets about uh the smart technologies it's available at my tweet tag mutu for all thank you folks thank you